Welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we are going to be handling specifically or emphasizing specifically equation balancing. Now, this is a video which is an extension to redox reactions. And in this video, we are just going to elaborate more about using redox reactions to balance equations that involve specific compounds or elements with acids. So at first share the video to your friends so that you can all get the information in time. Now as, as earlier mentioned in the first step when you are dealing with redox reactions what we first do is we write well balanced tough equations. Now after writing like I've said this is an extension of redox reaction video because I've been over mentioning this in almost all my videos about this chemistry platform emphasizing usage of redox reactions in terms of balancing molecular equations so this video we are going to be seeing compounds such as oxides oxides of different compounds or specific elements like the example here used is aluminium now what you need to know is that you need to know how the molecular equation is written or you need to know the statement that leads you to the formation of a product for example these equations only apply for elements or compounds reacting with oxidizing acids and oxi oxidizing acids we have hot concentrated sulfuric acid which was used in this example and the other one is hot concentrated nitric acid so first of all we want to use the knowledge of redox reaction, which is already a topic uploaded in this channel. We want to use the knowledge of redox reactions to form a well-balanced ionic equation. Now, how are, you, how are you going to do that? Now, borrowing the knowledge of borrowing the knowledge of redox reactions and some of the topics that I've told you. When aluminium reacts with hot concentrated sulfuric acid, the statement to that equation is going to be that hot concentrated sulfuric acid is going to oxidize aluminium forming aluminium sulfate but you are not interested in the aluminium sulfate you're interested in what is taking place in the redox reaction so that means that after sulfuric acid oxidizing it gets reduced to sulfur dioxide together with water now when you're forming up equations for these acids first of all you ionize the, the, you, are, you make the equation for the oxidizing agent ionizing sulfuric acid is going to give us the sulfate ions together with the hydrogen ions in one of your half equations and then you are going to get on your right hand side you'll be getting sulfur dioxide together with water now you balance that half equation by putting protons on your left hand side and then you try to balance the equation using the redox reaction knowledge that you already discussed now the other equation is going to be for aluminium getting oxidized to aluminium ion and it's simply aluminium the other the second half equation is going to be for aluminium getting oxidized to aluminium 3 ion and that means that it has undergone oxidation now after balancing the two half equations we combine the two half equations simply by eliminating electrons like i said i'm just reviewing redox reaction knowledge that we earlier discussed on this channel so after ensuring that you have a well balanced ionic equation by eliminating electrons from the two half equations to get the overall equation now also this equation is marked also this equation is marked but uh, for this specific for this video we want to look at if at all you have the ionic equation form but you still want to use the molecular equation so that's that's the main focus for this video so first of all we write a well-balanced ionic equation so in this case our well-balanced ionic equation is this one and we got it by using redox reaction knowledge now the other thing is you write the molecular equation also aside from which for which you want to balance using the redox reaction knowledge so number step three is going to be to balance the acid in the molecular equation by considering the number of hydrogen ions first which are present in the ionic equation so after remember that your molecular equation is not going to be balanced so what you need to know in your molecular equation you need to know that aluminium is going to act with sulfuric acid to give me aluminium sulfate together with sulfur dioxide and water 
Now here, what you have to consider first is that you get your ionic equation. From your ionic equation, as you are going to balance your molecular equation, what you need to know first is going to be the number of protons or the number of hydrogen ions. Now, from this equation or from this ionic equation, the number of hydrogen ions is 12. Now, number of hydrogen ions, remember that is present on the left-hand side, is the one which is going to help us to balance the acid. We balance the acid using the number of hydrogen ions that are present in the that are present in the ionic equation. So to, we we are going to write our molecular equation and we make sure that the number of hydrogen atoms in the molecular equation on on our left hand side must be twelve. Now the other step is that you are going to go through quickly because I'm not going to be reviewing this this equation. I hope you have noted it down. So you note it down so that you follow on the other steps. The other step is when you have, after after balancing your atoms or your hydrogen atoms in the molecular equation by ensuring that they are equal in number with hydrogen ions that are present in your ionic equation, you look at elements that are present in their standard states. By standard states, I hope you you understood that properly in thermochemistry. That is solid, gaseous, or a liquid state. Now, for, for elements that are present in these formats, solids, gases, or liquids, we don't alter anything. For example, if you are, told you are, you are having them common in the, also in the molecular equation, for example, in the molecular equation, you are going to have sulfur dioxide, which is a gas, and you are also going to have water, which is a liquid. For these ones, you don't alter anything. You just pick the coefficients which is three and you put it on sulfur dioxide in the molecular equation you also pick six and then you put it on the water in the molecular equation also here aluminium is in terms of solid state so you just pick its coefficient and you put it in the molecular equation without altering anything but that's strictly for elements that are present in solid gaseous or liquid state so proceeding, we are going to say that from the above equation, hydrogen ions are going to be at 12, just like we have seen. So we have to make sure that in our molecular equation, the number of hydrogen atoms are also going to be 12. That's why we say that. So we ensure there are 12 hydrogen atoms in the molecular equation 2 as the first step. Now let's take a look at our molecular equation. So as you're starting out, your molecular equation is just, you're just going to be knowing by words that aluminium reacts with sulfuric acid to form aluminium sulfate, sulfur dioxide, and water. That's what you know. But in the first case, you remember that you, you used redox reaction knowledge to form the ionic equation. So we are using the ionic equation to balance up this molecular equation. So what you do first, we say that you first make sure that the number of hydrogen ions in the ionic equation corresponds to the number of hydrogen atoms in the molecular equation. So there were 12 in the ionic equation. So since here we are having two, two of them on the left hand side, we put here six to make sure that there are 12 hydrogen at ions or 12 hydrogen atoms in our molecular equation, which is going to equate to the number of hydrogen ions that are present in the ionic equation. So that's why I say that. So I've put here a 6 because 6 times 2 is going to total up to 12 hydrogen atoms, which will eventually equate to the number of hydrogen ions that are going to be present in our, in our ionic equation. So having understood that, Having made the, the number of hydrogen ions in the ionic equation being equal to the number of hydrogen atoms in our molecular equation, we assume that the acid is going to be balanced on our left hand side. Now, the other step is to take in note or to take into consideration what I've told you about. So, our next step is to identify the different elements, atoms, or compounds that are going to be existing in their standard state from the ionic equation. For example, the standard states are solids, gaseous, and then the liquid state. So here, we just pick the coefficients. We just pick the coefficients from the ionic equation. And then we put them in the molecular equation without altering anything. So that if, if you look at your ionic equation previously, we are having sulfur dioxide gas. You are also having it here. You are having water, which is existing as a liquid. So those ones which exist in their standard states, you just pick the coefficients that are present in the ionic equation, and then you just put them 
the way they are. You don't alter anything. So you're going to say that that's our molecular equation is going to become or is going to tend to as follows. So writing this out, you from my unique equation, you saw that aluminium since it's in solid state has add a coefficient of two. So we put it here. You just pick the coefficients of those ones that are present in their standard states, solid, gas, or liquid. Also, sulfur dioxide is in terms of gas, so we just pick the coefficient from the unique equation and then we put it there. Water is in terms of liquid form, so you just pick the coefficient, which was six, and then you put it opposite the water molecule. So you're going to say that. So all the coefficients as present in the ionic equation are going to put to be put directly onto the molecular equation, provided these elements or compounds are present in their standard states. So this was a re-emphasis, gaseous, solid, or the liquid state. Now, someone may say, what about our compound? We, because that's what you only didn't balance. Now, in majority of the cases, you'll find that the reactions the reactions that are going to involve elements together with with concentrated acids or with oxidizing acids such as concentrated sulfuric acid together with concentrated nitric acid all those reactions are going to be the compounds in most cases are going to be self-balanced but if they are not balanced then there it is easy because you have balanced this side and this side it's easy to balance up one compound you'll be easily seeing that as compared to balancing the others. So uh, the redox reaction is just to simplify your work in terms of being fast and writing appropriate well balanced equations because it's a very key for passing chemistry at advanced level. So we made the conclusion that that implies that for these for those in aqueous states, usually the compound or salts formed on the right hand side it will be balanced by default. However, it's not always the case because I've told you, you have to look at this compound which is always remaining and you see whether it will be balanced or not. But in this case, for ours, it was well balanced. I hope that is understood. So that was it for this video. This video has been presented to you by Algenbe. So if you advise, share the video to your friends and subscribe to the channel so that you can all benefit as a group. Now make sure that you share the link to this video to majority of your friends doing chemistry because equation balancing is one of the main reasons why students are failing chemistry. So make sure that you don't have a bad heart and you share the video to your friends so that you can all benefit as a team. So see you in the next video under this platform.